name is Dave Good. I teach people how to play the saxophone. And this is, uh, this is uh, the, the lesson number three in a series I started called the Tone Workshop. Tone is so important to all of us who play the saxophone. It's, that, it's, the, it's almost the holy grail of saxophone. We're always trying to get that tone a little bit better. Some of us buy lots of mouthpieces, some of us buy lots of reeds, some of us uh, buy lots of uh, ligatures. You can invest a lot of money. You can invest your child's college fund in mouthpieces, ligatures, and, <laughs> and reeds. I, I've been there. I paid as much as $1,000 for a mouthpiece, I admit. I'm playing, uh, th these days, a $25 Rico Graftonite mouthpiece. If these were $400 a piece, they would not be able to keep them on the shelves. They're awesome. Rico Graftonite. Uh, you can have one delivered to you for, I, shipping included, 30 bucks, I think. So anyway, the Tone Workshop, this is session number three. Session number two, we went over uh, uh, top tones. Uh, we, we, we went over some of the harmonic overtones discussed in uh, Sigurd Rascher's incredibly good uh, and detailed book about that called Top Tones for the Saxophone. Today we're going to do a, a, a slight variation of that, okay? I'm going to ask you to forget that your saxophone has an octave key. Ooh, the octave key, right? Makes things so easy, doesn't it? Clarinets have a register key, which is kind of like an octave key. I've never played an oboe, but I've been, I'm told they have three octave keys. Maybe two, I don't know. And I think the bassoon has a reverse octave key. Never played a bassoon, but somebody who does, so when you hit that trigger, it, it drops an octave, right? Well, as you all know, this raises you up into the octave the, uh, the, uh, the, without any effort. You don't have to change your airspeed, you don't have to change your embouchure, you don't have to change your thinking, your politics, anything. Just push the button. Well, that kind of robs you of the experience that most wind instruments have in that they really don't have octave keys. Ask a trumpet player, right? Tuba, trombone. Uh, yeah, just, just go down the list. They do it all with their, the speed of their air. And I want, in this last exercise, this is a, something I've been working on to, to help you build resonance and project and to fill a room somewhere. Now, let's talk about that for a quick second before the exercise. Let's fill a room somewhere. Most of you, I know, are probably not going to have the opportunity to play in a band and fill any room except the one that you're in. Um, and perhaps you're, you're, you're playing saxophone for your own enjoyment, which is absolutely awesome and perfect. Needs go no further, but man, playing with somebody else is, 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 is kind of what it's all about. So anyway, I just stifled a sneeze there. It's uh, Southern California. Summer weather has come back the day after Thanksgiving, and we are hot and dry here. So our sinuses here don't know what to do. I digress. Back to you. So this exercise is about building resonance. You're going to forget that you have an octave key. You're not allowed to use it, but you're going to play a D scale. You're going to finger low D, but you're going to play middle D. What do I mean by middle D? D2. You know, here's low D. On the old tenor sax, whatever sax you have. Alto, soprano, baritone. These, all these exercises will work, okay? Now we're going to play up an octave without using the octave key. And as you get better at this, I want you to be able to control. I don't want you to blast it out. I want you to be able to like bring it back in, make it a little bit louder, bring it back in, make it a little bit louder. Let's go up the scale. Let's go up the D sharp, B flat. Same thing, finger low, but play high. You're noticing that it takes really good air support to make that happen, doesn't it? You pop that little trigger and eh, no problem, it just jumps right up to the octave, but without it, you gotta put air in the horn and maybe even adjust your embouchure a little bit. All the pros say, no, don't do that. It's just, you just do whatever works for you. I could tell you what works for me, but it won't work for you. What you have works for you. You have a different mouth, different sinuses, different oral cavity, different mouthpiece. You may have a thousand dollar mouthpiece. 
hoping that it'll do the work for you. It won't. It's, it's no more valuable than mine. Well, yeah, in terms of retail sale, but... Let's go up to an E now. A little vibrato. Oh, yeah. Now let's go up to an F. Still not using the octave key. I'm at G now. So anyway, you hear the notes starting to degrade a little bit. They start to like, like crumble and fall apart. Yeah, that's because your air is slowing down. This is all about sucking in a ton of air. I don't care how you do it. Just get it into your person and get it back into the horn. Keep your stomach muscles tight. T-I-G-H-T. Okay? Tight. They should sound like a drum. Push that air back in the horn. Now, why would you do this? Well, this helps to build resonance. Once again, each of these octaves, without using the octave key, are octave. They're uh, harmonic overtones. Hello, Dave. Have you had coffee this morning? Yes. In fact, two cups. Those are harmonic overtones of the, the, the fundamental. The fundamental, let's go back down to the bottom of the scale. We'll start, we started with D, right? The lowest note is called the fundamental, and, and the first partial is the, uh, is the octave. You can get an A out of a D too, did you know that? Yes, we can go on all day with the overtones that we can make from single notes, but I would just like you for the purpose of this exercise to do this every day for the next six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I don't know, what are, how about the month of December? Work on this resonance exercise. Uh, you can go back to playing, of course, uh, with your octave key. You get to use it again, but when you get back to using your octaves, what happens is that your, your sound is better because you've learned now this, the secret is that you've got to do some adjustment of the airflow. The horn wants more air and the horn wants a little bit, you know, just a, a little embouchure love, right? You want to be in the sweet spot on your reed mouthpiece combination, whatever you're using. I don't care what it is. Make yourself a promise that for as long as you do this exercise, <laughs> you're not going to go mouthpiece shopping, okay? That, you're going to stick with what you got, okay? Why is that important? Well, it's important to stick with what you got because you get to know your gear, right? I have a really old, old tenor saxophone, right? It's a wonderful old horn and I love it. And I love the, the uh, Jim Weiss who keeps it in great repair for me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to, you know, play such an old fine horn as this. Um, and, and again, a cheap mouthpiece. I've had them all. And uh, I've settled on this because it works for me, all right? What works for me ain't going to work for you. My embouchure pressure isn't right for you. Uh, you know, and on and on down the list. So you have to figure out what's right for you. All right, last, uh, la the last thing I want to get into here in, in, the, in, in Lesson 3 is you got to listen. Get out and listen to live saxophone it, uh, wherever you can. We don't have many options for that here. Uh, in, um, yeah, just below Los Angeles in Southern California, we, 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 our clubs have all dried up. It's just the nature of the beast we won't even let's let's not even go down that path but find any time you can any opportunity that you have listen to someone who can really blow okay in in a in a room in person that may just be a, a really good sax teacher i i don't know and i don't really care what the genre is whatever you play jazz concert classical funk blues, whatever you play, these exercises will help to improve your tongue. Reach out to me at davegoodsax at gmail.com. davegoodsax at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. Thank all of you who have subscribed. If you haven't yet, bang on that subscription, that subscribe button. Subscription button. No, it's a subscribe button, and and uh, hit the dinger if you you know if you if you if you like what you hear. Uh, suggestions for future lessons. I'd love to hear from you. So anyway. Uh, good luck with tone. I, I'm always grateful when you write and when you send clips of your playing. I love to listen to what and how you're doing. So good luck with all this. And uh, since we're at the uh, the, the cusp of the holidays, I will wish each and all of, each and every one of you and yours uh, the best of the holiday season. 
checking out now for a while. Stay good. Over and out.